Welcome to the blind battle of the peated cherry casks. I'm your host, Sam, and this is Whiskey and SV. All right, I'm super excited about tonight's episode. So um, as I told you before, my journey in whiskey started with the Glenlivet 12. And for the longest time, that's the only whiskey that I really tried and, and, and I enjoyed it and it was fine. Um, and I'd always seen the Lafroy 10 in many stores. It's, it's a very available, uh, famous peated uh, Scotch uh, whiskey. But I never bought it because it cost almost double a Glenlivet 12 at the time. And my thought process was, why would I pay double for something that is uh, that has two years less of age? But boy, was I wrong. The first time I actually got to try it was at a friend's house. And when he opened the bottle, this um, peaty, smoky, uh, barbecue kind of, um, you know, fire uh, aroma just completely overtook the room and uh, actually lady was there and she really liked it as well so um and yeah that that kind of like launched us into exploration of more p and uh, uh, that type of uh, profile of a whiskey uh, so let me tell you what like a, a peat uh, a smoked uh, whiskey is um so peat is a type of fuel it's basically in in, in wet and marshy lands in boggy lands uh, where uh, a lot of uh, plants over time die and fall onto the soil. Uh, they compress and over thousands of years, uh, they don't fully decompose because of the wetness uh, of the, uh, and, and the moss or some specific like stuff that's in it. Uh, and um, that mm, combination of compressed uh, soil and uh, semi-decomposed plants, they can be dug up and used as fuel. And in fact, in many areas where they didn't have access to um, other alternative source of fuel, they would use uh, this uh, peat as their primary uh, heating source. Um, and in the Scotch whiskey industry, um, and traditionally especially, they used, um, they used the peat as their primary source of um, heat for distillation. And, and a lot of uh, distilleries also use the peat to uh, actually to dry the barley. And that drying process um, typically uh, is done with uh, smoking it and not just heating it, but also smoking it. And that smoke, as it goes through the barley uh, before it is malted, it, it, it basically imparts a bunch of very smoky and earthy and, you know, medicinal flavors to it. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, the, the one of the most famous distilleries that produces this type of whiskey is Lafroy. And Lafroy is actually based in a in an island on the west coast of Scotland called, called the Isle of Isla. So Isla is spelled I S L A Y, um, but um, you know Islay, but but you say Isla, and uh, it is uh, it is actually the home of many very famous uh, Scotch uh, whiskey distilleries, including uh, Lagavulin. Uh, which is also does a uh, great uh, peated uh, scotch, uh, uh, the Kilcoman, which I have an example here today. Um, Artbag, uh, that's another very famous one. Uh, yeah, there's like a bunch of really famous uh, distilleries there. Most of them do uh, peated scotch whiskies, uh, although some of them don't. Uh, Buna Habin, for example, is an example of one that doesn't. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, many of them that are very cool. So yeah. And I think uh, peat is definitely one of those things that a lot of people, even Scotch uh, aficionados, may not like. So it's one of those things that uh, you should definitely try early on in your whiskey journey. Uh, give it a try. And, uh, you know, you could be like us, uh, myself and Laylee, uh, that we loved it from the first time we tried it. Uh, so others uh, hate it and they never want to go back to it. Others, they're like so-so about it. And, and, you know, over time it grows on them and they like it. So... Uh, I, I really encourage everyone who starts their whiskey journey to uh, definitely try some sort of uh, heavily peated scotch uh, whiskey at some point early in their journey uh, to see if that's something they want to explore more. Um, actually, that might be bad advice because some people say you should actually start from uh, mildly peated stuff first and then go. Um, but yeah, for me, it was just like just heading, um, diving head first into that peat world was 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 just a, a really great experience. Anyways, um, yeah. So uh, all, all what what these have in common uh, today is that they're all uh, pretty heavily peated, but they're also uh, sherry bonds, meaning that they they have like a lot of um, uh, strong sherry mat maturation. 
so uh, you know basically the two opposite sides mix together and uh, it should make for a really interesting whiskey series. And indeed, uh, I have tried all of these before, and I, and I really like all of them. Um, but the goal today, again, is to do a blind to see, uh, you know, if I don't know the labels and whatever, which one do I like most? And can I really tell them apart from each other? Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to tell these apart because I don't have too much experience with some of them. Um, so we'll see. <clears throat> okay, but let's uh, let's get started on introducing these whiskeys. And uh, so, yeah, today, um, the first one is going to be uh, the Smokehead um the smokehead sherry bomb actually the name of this <laughs> whiskey is the sherry bomb so uh yeah and yeah smokehead is one of those um companies uh that they don't actually tell you where they get their distillate from and it just says it is a, a isla single malt, malt scotch whiskey so the fact that it is coming from one distillery in isla and isla is very famous for being pd so obviously it's going to be pd um and uh, well not necessarily as i said before there are distilleries there that are not pd but uh well this is smokehead and obviously i've tried it i know it's pd um so yeah and this is bottled at 48 percent abv this is actually a very interesting company because uh, they actually market their products to um, younger people uh, that's why they're all uh, you know uh, very bold designs and uh, you know this is the can that it came in uh, it's like super cool and like a lot of people find it really cool um and i do as well um yeah so very cool uh this one is a limited edition whiskey so um you know and uh, i believe when i first bought it it was around uh 80 dollars but the uh, last i checked it was more like a hundred dollars so the price has gone up like everything else in whiskey which sucks um but it is what it is okay so next um we have the lafroy 10 year old and uh, this one is also bottled at 48 percent abv um, and uh, if you look at the back there, there is some expl explanation of how this was uh, matured. Yeah. So basically, um, this one is, I guess it's kind of like the regular 10 year in some ways, but then it's finished in uh, Oloroso uh, sherry cast. So it says, the unique expression from Lafroy combines the unforgettable flavors of our 10 year old whiskey with the sweet aromatic flavors from the Oloroso sherry cast. The marriage of cask creates a rich, full-bodied uh, fla uh, full flavor with notes of manuka honey, bacon, maple syrup, along the classic smoked seaweed and hint of salt that Lafroy is known and loved for. So, yeah, basically, you know, it was probably uh, the usual ex-bourbon maturation, and then they put it uh, for, uh, you know, uh, some, some, you know, a year or a few months in, in, in all of those sherry casks. Okay, next we have the Kilcoman Gil, uh, Lock Gorm, the Kilcoman Lock Gorm 2021 edition. And this Kilcoman Lock Gorm 2021 edition actually has a little um, card that it came with it, uh, if I can get it here. And uh, this card actually says that it is nine years old, and um, it is nine years old, and uh, it was uh, one of uh, 17,000 bottles made from 24 sherry butts matured for a minimum of nine years. So, uh, yeah, sherry butts are uh, 500 liters, uh, and that's like standard, like basically what sherry is matured in. And um, uh, for uh, uh, 500 liters, like for uh, comparison, if you think about like a, a, a typical whiskey barrel, that's about 200 liters. So uh, they're much bigger kind of like containers. That means the influence of the wood might be less than uh, what you would get from like an ex-bourbon or bourbon cask. Okay. Let's talk about the last one. Last but not least, uh, we have the Glen Scotia Campbelltown uh, Malts Festival 2022. Uh, this was a limited eight-year edition. Uh, is a peated PX cast finish. Uh, this is a, a, a banger of a whiskey because it is at cast strength, at 56.5% cast strength. So um, I've tried this before and I really, really liked it. So I got myself a backup. Um, this, uh, actually just the uh, price wise, the lock warm, I think when I got it, it was about a hundred dollars, but now last I checked, it was like $120. Uh, this Glen Scotia, um, uh, special edition one, a limited edition one is, uh, around $80. Okay. So, uh, we have our whiskeys here. So next I'm going to get lady to come here and shuffle them up. So, uh, yeah, we can go ahead and do some tasting and see which one we like the best. Hi everyone, my name is Lely. I'm Sam's sidekick for the channel. I'm helping him to shuffle the bottles when uh, he is not in the room. 
and uh, later on we let him pick uh, I mean basically guess if he can taste the correct one so we'll start okay I'm happy with the result see you soon bye all right so let's get started I'm gonna get uh, started with the first one. That's next to uh, the uh, smoke head bottle. Hmm. So, yeah, this one on the nose um, is typical barbecue, uh, you know, smoked ham kind of flavors, uh, aromas. Yeah, this. Um, combination of peat and cherry to me is always basically just um yeah smoked ham like barbecue um honestly i don't get much more on the nose uh, it's such a dominant uh you know aroma that's uh hmm. okay so let's try it Whew. wow um yeah so um <clears throat> you know the palate is um uh, very similar to the uh, to the nose you know, the arrival is this kind of like um, uh, uh, savory type of uh, flavors, and then gets a bit sweet actually, and then um, then uh, the uh, peppers come out, and it's like a bit spicy, and then um, when it goes down, uh, you know, those ling the, the the lingering flavors are just kind of like um, yeah, savory um, meat, barbecue, uh, smoked ham. Uh, yeah, it's quite quite a quite a strong aftertaste. <clears throat> I like that a lot. Um, yeah, even when I'm breathing right now, I I, I feel, you know, there's like, um, a, a kind of like a peaty thing coming out of my nose. Um, very very cool. Okay, so I have no idea which one this is. Um, that was pretty good though. So let's try the second one. Okay. This is definitely different in that there is a, there is some, um, I feel like there's more like coastal elements here. It's not quite as intense as the other one on the nose. Uh, and um, there's some briny characteristic to it. I can almost like feel um, more like um, sweet, uh, flavors here it's not as it's not the same mm, yeah it's definitely not the same like smoked ham uh, savory uh, aromas uh, that's not the dominant thing here a little bit of like limestone almost just kind of like wet um briny kind of limestone things okay so let's try this on the pile hmm Interesting. The palette was kind of similar in, in to the other one a little bit, but um, yeah, but I, I get more earthy flavors here. I get more, um, you know, in addition to the uh, kind of like the smoky peaty um, and cherry kind of uh, sweetness, I get a sort of earthy flavor. It is distinctly different though. There are some um, bitters and um, um yeah there are some like bitter flavors uh, that come uh, towards the middle and end of this um yeah <clears throat> i think between these two i probably preferred the first one i should probably cleanse my palate from this point let's try this one. <clears throat> oh wow I don't know if I didn't wash this <laughs> or something, but uh, I'm getting like much, much more fruity flavors in this, like way more fruity and almost like kind of, <clears throat> almost kind of like a fresh cut grass, um, which makes you think, did I, did I have a Frey Ranch in this before and I didn't wash it properly? Wow, that is uh, much more lively and I'm almost not getting any of the peat in this. <sighs> Weird. 
That is uh, way more fruity. It's like completely different. That is um, a lot more intense when um, uh, than the nose would have uh, 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 indicated. Um, let's, let's, let me try that again. Yeah, so um, this doesn't have any of that savory flavors. Um, it's actually, um, it just feels like it's a different type of peat. Uh, I would say the other two had similar type of peat. It was kind of, uh, I, I would say that's probably what Isla Peat tastes like. If I was to guess what this is, um, just by the intensity of uh, on the palate and the fact that it was so different, I would say this is probably the Glen Scotia. And uh, it would kind of make sense, I think, because um, these kind of sweet um, flavors are more of a PX influence. And I believe these are both Oloroso. Um, and even this one, I think uh, it doesn't say actually. Um, yeah, but it was, um, yeah, definitely. Now I don't get as much as the, wow. I think, um, yeah, just um, more fruity um, sweetness and um, yeah, um, a little bit of spices, but not so much and uh, very lingering. So yeah, I think if I was to guess right now, I would say this is probably the Glen Scotia. Okay, let's try this. Um, so I swapped these and I'm going to try this one, which is the fourth one that I... Okay, this has a um, a little bit of a uh, this has a little bit of a classic um, sherry uh, sul sulfuric kind of uh, notes that you get from uh, high quality sherry casks. Um, so and it doesn't ha it's not again not like the kind of uh, savory beefy uh, kind of uh, smoked ham flavor. It's more like a, yeah it's it's more like a uh, high quality sherry cast that's like got a bit of like a sulfur kind of like note to it. So I would guess this is probably the lock gorm. Okay, let's try it on a palette. Yeah, it's much softer on the palette. Um, it's basically what if you take a high quality sherry cast and then peat it, that's what this tastes like, and it's much. Um, it was much um, less. It feels like it has a lot less ABV on the on the palate. So, um, so I'm pretty sure it's got to be the uh, the Lock Gorm uh, because uh, the Lock Gorm is the only one here that's 46. Uh, percent This one is cast strength, so I think pretty much I'm pretty confident that that's it. Um, and uh, yeah, between these two, I, I got to go back and try. And they were both 48. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is. Yeah, if you just take a high high quality sherry cask and and peat it quite uh, quite a lot, <laughs> this is uh, I think that's what you would get up with. And I like this. It's 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 very nice. It's, it kind of reminds me like of the Kill Karen Eight sherry cask that I uh, tried recently with one of my new whiskey friends. Um, so uh, yeah, shout out to Naman uh, for that. Thank you. Um, okay, so yeah, I think this is uh, pretty sure. Okay, so if in order of what I like so far, I think. I definitely really liked this uh, Glen Scotia the most uh, because it was just so different. Yeah, it's like it's it's kind of like a fresh cut grass and um, fruit kind of flavors on the nose. Of course, um, I'm sure it has um, peat on it, but uh, yeah, it's uh, the peat is uh, I've just been like drinking and uh, so much peated stuff and and and. and uh, you know, smelling so much peat that um, that's kind of lost on me now. But but yeah, this is uh, so unique. That's very good. That's excellent. I um, yeah, this is this is definitely uh, my favorite. Um, probably because also it's cast right. <laughs> um, okay, I don't even know if it's the the Glen Scotia, but what I think is the Glen Scotia. This one, whatever it is, is is definitely my favorite. Um, this one is also very good uh, because uh, when I think about um, 
yeah, uh, the Kill Karen uh, 8 that I had last night, the Sherry Matured one. Uh, this is what this reminds me of. Yeah, it's like a little bit of, um, you know, a sulfuric uh, kind of, you know, when, when I say sulfur, um, you know, that's not enticing, uh, I guess. But um, and sometimes I'm not in the mood for sulfuric uh, kind of notes in my sherry, but um, I think um, uh, I've learned to enjoy it and uh, definitely getting it here. Very nice. Okay. So let me go back to these two and try to see if I can um, pick which one I like the most uh, and whether if I like him. So I think it's clearly number one for me was that one, whatever it is. But these two, um, I have to make a decision about, I have to understand which, which is which. And also I have to say um, which one I like more and if I like him better than Lockworm or not. Okay, so weirdly, now that I've gone back to this first one, it's no longer as um, smoked ham on the nose uh, either. Weird. Okay, <laughs> I think I need a palate cleanser. Yeah, really the earthy flavors come in in this a lot. And uh, there's a kind of like a, the earthy flavors are kind of like a dusty, um, yeah. It's like smoked ham plus dusty earthy flavors. Um, so I, I think that's what I usually get in Lafroig. So I would say, but I don't know if this is also a Lafroig. This could also be a Lafroig. So I think tentatively, I think this this is a Lafroig. Uh, and, I, and, and I do enjoy it a lot. Um, so I'm going to go to this one first and see if this also has that earthy flavor that I typically think is Lafroig. Yeah. These two are very similar, to be honest. <laughs> Extremely similar. Smoked ham kind of flavors, um, um, smoked ham kind of uh, aromas. <laughs> I think this feels a bit less smoky than this one. I'm going to do one last. Uh-oh. Computer may be going. OK, let's see. All right. OK. OK, let's see. Hmm. This feels more smoky. So I would say probably. <laughs> Hard to know. Let me go one more time. These two are way too similar. I just finished this, so. Okay. Last chance. This one has more um, peppery notes and um, citrus notes at the end of it. I'm gonna switch these around. I wanna go. I wanna say this one is this uh, the the smoke bar the smoke head sherry cask, and this one is the um, uh, Lafroig uh, oak the sherry oak finish. They're very similar though, so I don't really know. Okay, so those are my uh, those are my picks, and um, uh, yeah, okay, let's go back to uh, what I uh, what I would rate them, and uh, yeah, so I think definitely number one for me is the uh, Glen Scotia. Um, uh, number two, or at least whatever this is, um, I would say number two is a lockworm, or whatever I think is a lockworm, because I think I really like a sherry cask and um, a high quality sherry cask that's peated. That's that's kind of like a long growish kind of uh, uh, taste profile. And then these two, I think, are uh, um, basically the same. I'm not. I, I don't think I prefer one over the other specifically. I think they're both uh, close. And, and and I would say this is like by far the number one. This is um, number two, and then number three and four are kind of like very close to me. So, yeah, those are my picks. Let's uh, let's get Lely to come here and uh, let's see what, how I did. Hey. All right. Okay. So let's see how I did. Okay. Let's start. Okay. The reading. Number number two. What? <laughs> okay. 
that's fine. I, I think I think these two are, I I wasn't like super sure, but uh, I thought I got it right though. Okay, fine, fine, okay. Let's see. That one should be the other frog then. I mean that should be the smokehead then. Three. What? <laughs> no. No. Today no. Was not your day, baby. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my god. Um Okay, so what does that mean? So so this this has it means you didn't pick the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what is this one? Let me show you. One. This is one. Okay, hold on. Okay, so that means that means I got the glowing scorcher right at least, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess this is. Four. Yeah, that has to be four then. Yeah. Okay, so. So at least one. Is... I think I know what happened. I think like basically these what two. What happened is n me not being involved in switching or <laughs> doing anything. No, I th I think what happened is, what I thought are um, the smokehead and the Lafroig were actually the lockworm and the Lafroig. And they were so similar, um, you know, both kind of like these meaty, savory flavors. Um, and uh, the, um, the peat was like very similar. That earthy flavor is very similar. Uh, they get this like dusty flavor. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you should try these. And I want, I want to see what you think. Like if you try, uh, actually, let's, let's, uh, oops, let's, ch let's change the order back. So what is this? This, this was a two, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, was this two? Yeah. yeah, this is two. So two is here. Okay. Yeah. So um. So yeah, l these two are the Lafroy and the uh, the Loch Gorm. So give them a try and tell me. Do you think they're similar or are they very different? Oh, yeah. smell wise, this is definitely stronger. Stronger, right? Yeah. And has like, it's like a, four percent. I think two percent more alcohol, but like sort but of also it's more. When you smell, like uh, you feel there is like a sort of, like a metalish smell in the end. It's like it's like I don't know how to put it. Like water stayed in one place in in a metal place for a long time. You know, there's a special special smell. Interesting. Yeah. Give it a try. I want to see what you think. Like from a... this is compared to this, is mm -hmm. not smoky as much, mm -hmm. but I mean, has a bit of wood smell, but wood and fruit. Okay. Too strong for me. What do um, you think? No, I guess I like this better. <clears throat> do you think they're similar though? I like it aftertaste of this more because this is a bit of str it gets strong the aftertaste is too strong to smell of like you feel like you you are biting biting metal rather than metal but like but i like the taste of this better than that one i guess i do see a little bit of a metallic taste mm -hmm. but if, to me it's not more metallic it's more um kind of like a strong uh, smoked ham kind of flavor mm -hmm. I like the after, like the woody sort of uh, thing of this, but mm -hmm. taste wise, this is better. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so I guess these two. Okay, this one I, I really want to try this one because this one is this this one should be completely different than the other two. This is not smoky at all, is it? It is. Yeah. Wow. It's on the nose. It's it does. It's not very smoky. It does, like you. It's. It definitely has some smoke, but not that much. But when you when you taste it, then you you kind of get the peat. Hmm. I guess compared to these two, it's not as fruity. Peaty. No, I don't get. But it's it. very fruity, right? Yeah, I don't get like any smoky taste, but especially compared to this one. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, like laugh for it, like you know, like laugh for it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I wonder what distillery this is. So this is also from Isla. Uh, but this uh, is much more like a sherry. Uh, try that as well. Let me think what you think of this mm -hmm. one. Hmm. I don't know. What is that? Yeah, this is my favorite by far. I always love uh, Lafroid. But the funny thing is, I always like love uh, Lafroid. But now, come putting it next to others, then you see. Uh, the this like you can, uh, you know, distinguish which one, like you you find out something that you didn't pay attention before. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. 
I like this a lot as well because it's it's kind of like a sherry cast that's been peed in mm. rather than like... rather than something that's just like mm. love for and it's that's just literally finished in, mm. in a, so it's like the the usual rough roy but just mm. you know finished off for a year in another thing sure. but that's like so strong that my whole whatever i'm tasting <laughs> the aftertaste is, like, yeah. Yeah. is like it, it comes that way mm -hmm. so now i'm having a mix this has some like it. sulfury eggy kind of mm. you know sherry thing to it but but not in a bad way no no it's pretty smooth i like that part but again like i had that and that's like over uh covering they're all so good though i mean yeah, i think you can't go wrong with any of these all right yeah. well did you enjoy this episode i think so <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was like the more you lose i should have done more homework to be honest um i, I i'd only tried like this like one time uh before i've only tried this one time before i think they were both like i just had a dram from them like more than a year ago mm. or yeah more than a year ago now um and i just never revisited until today that i i was doing it blind so anyways those are my you excuses had quite a night last night so uh you, like you lost the power to go through more well uh, you know the the track record hasn't been great so far so <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone okay. thank you very much for joining have and uh, have a great week and see you see next you week soon. bye bye